They've come from 27 countries to the American Cup Gymnastics Championships. Yes, the world is here, and the lady to beat is an American, Christy Phillips, at 13 years old, the youngest American to compete here. Her coach, the same man who led Mary Lou and Nadia to gold. Phillips, the heir apparent to the throne left vacant by Mary Lou Retton. Today, coach Bella Caroli is ready to unleash his new secret weapon. For the men, 19-year-old Brian Ginsburg, who, like Phillips, is attempting to break new ground in his first big international meet. Yes, the world is here, and two young Americans will be in the thick of it. A packed house here in the George Mason University Patriot Center, where more than 8,000 have come to see the world's very best gymnasts. Hello again, everyone. I'm John Tesh, and welcome to Fairfax, Virginia, for the most prestigious international gymnastic event that's held here in America, the American Cup. What we're going to be seeing today is some of the young stars, some youngsters who weren't even old enough to compete in the 1984 Olympic Games, and some of the oldsters who are trying to hang on so they can reach Seoul in 1988 for the Olympics there. Working with me is our expert, of course, Bart Connor, who retired in 84, Olympic champion. Bart, what we've been seeing over the last year or so is an escalation in the events that almost appears to be dangerous. Isn't that the truth? I mean, we're seeing a level of difficulty that these gymnasts are expected to do. I mean, triple flips and double twisting double flips. It's getting pretty hairy, but one of the most interesting areas in our sport now is the originality. Everybody's trying to come up with completely new tricks to get those valuable originality points. So we're going to see a lot of good gymnastics. One of the men who's been pushing the difficulty factor in gymnastics is one of the holdovers from the 84 Olympic team who is pointing to 88. But we won't be seeing Tim Daggett today defend his title here. Daggett, the Olympic gold medalist, was preparing for the vault and showed he was in a lot of pain because of an injured right ankle. Tim tried his best to continue, but the pain proved to be too much. And after a discussion with his coach, Daggett pulled out of the competition here at the American Cup. Now, his problems first became really evident to us when he finished with this dismount on the rings and watch his face very closely. And Daggett was in pain there. Before the rings was the floor exercise. You know, Tim is an outstanding gymnast and he got off to a rough start in floor exercise, which was gonna be his toughest event. Right at the beginning, he did the layout double back at the beginning of the exercise and I know he really munched his ankles when he landed. So he stung him to the point where as he got to vaulting later in the competition, he could not go, he couldn't even run, let alone go ahead and vault. Now to this point, the men have completed four rotations of six. Floor exercise, pommel horse, rings, and vault. That leaves the parallel bars and the very exciting and dangerous high bar to come. After those four rotations, Ginsburg is in first place. DeConkey, Wong, and Barbieri from France. So with Tim Daggett out of the competition with that injury, the American flag has now been passed from him to 19-year-old Brian Ginsburg, and with it all the pressure it will be on this youngster in his first major international competition. The women have completed the vault and the uneven parallel bars still to come for them, the balance beam and the floor exercise. The standings for the women after two, and Christy Phillips, the American, in second place to Irina Baraksanova from the Soviet Union. Second vault. Christy Phillips' first vault put her in first place after the first rotation, and it looked like this. Phillips again with that classic, powerful Mary Lou Retton style. Incredible. That's a round off onto the board, a back handspring onto the horse, and a laid out, twi a tucked, twisting, full twisting backflip off the horse. Very difficult vault, that she handled it perfectly. It was the uneven parallel bars, though, that cost Phillips her first place position. She had a disappointing 9 4 5 0. And here's a look at that. Watch closely as she will lose her momentum and hit her left leg on the bar. But she still stayed in second place. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Look at that smile. She is such a personality. Now, she's a very good gymnast. She has good technique. She doesn't have the quite explosive skills that Mary Lou did. She's very sharp. OK, this is live now. Let's listen in. Here's Bella. Make sure you know those two things has shown finishing on the side, on the side plate and extremely hard at the end, not somehow taken too early. The loose stance over there at the end. Bang! Oof. Now here's okay. Irina Baraksanova, who is our leader, going into the balance beam competition. Here is her balance beam competition, 16 years old. Baraksanova she... had a very disastrous day yesterday, as a matter of fact. She fell off the bars, and she fell off the beam once, and grabbed the beam another time. Had a terrible day. Here's a look at yesterday's performance while she was qualifying for today's final. 
Here's a back handspring to a layout. Chest roll down, and look at she's completely off the beam. Four foot seven, 77 pounds, and she is our leader. There's a back handspring on, a little bit wobbly. You have to know that she's got in the back of her mind. Here it comes, the skill she missed on yesterday. Back handspring. Ooh, pretty rough. She was able to stay on, which will be less of a deduction than if she completely fell off. But that has to be a few tenths for being that much out of line. Another wobble on an aerial walkover. He doesn't seem as aggressive here as she has been in the past. She's a great performer, though. Notice the tremendous extension. Look at the beautiful split leap. Very elegant performer. Two back handsprings to a layout. That's one of the more difficult tumbling passes you can do. That beam is four feet high and only four inches wide. The beautiful split handstand. Now watch this. A reverse plange. Look at the tremendous back flexibility. It's said that Baroxanova has the elegance of Lumila Tereshova and the bouncing style of Olga Corbett. Lumila Tereshova, of course, 1972 Olympic gold medalist. And she has that classic Soviet look, doesn't she? Without a doubt, she's very elegant for being so young. Round off, double back. Okay, one little step. She's got quite a few bobbles in that exercise. It won't score that high, so it's gonna open the door for Christy Phillips. So trying to stay in first place is Irina Baraksanova, who was in first place going into this rotation. Just ahead of Christy Phillips, and here's the replay. Here's her dismount. Round off onto the end. Good reach, a little cowboy, but a very high landing. Good double backflip. This young lady achieved prominence in the 1985 World Championships in Montreal when, you may remember, she was pulled out of the competition. They said that uh, she had an injury, the Soviets said, and that allowed the third and fourth place Soviets to go on to the finals and eventually win. There was a lot of controversy surrounding that. Well, a lot of people weren't quite sure that she really had an injury, but she mentioned to us that she really did have a problem with her shoulder, and it would have been really tough to have been pulled out of the competition when you were fourth in the running. She's never been to the United States. When we spoke to her two days ago, we spent about an hour with her, and I think we caught about two sentences. <laughs> She's painfully shy. So again, Roxanova waiting for her score on the balance beam, which uh, will come from six judges. High and low will be thrown out, and the average will be coming up here, and that's a 9.40. Now we move to parallel bars. And, our 20 and her total, 28.863. So since she was the first in this Wolf rotation, Hoffman. she is still our leader. Still to come will be Christy Phillips from the United States. We're alternating men and women here with two rotations left. And this is Ulf Hoffman from East Germany. He's had a very good competition so far in the first four pieces of apparatus. But these, I think, are two of his best, the parallel bars and the high bar, the two we're about to see. Front up rise. It's a move called a Healy twirl to a front one and a quarter. Very nice combination of originality. Another Healy twirl. Gymnastics has its own language, as you can tell. It's a Stutz. Double back. Oops. Okay, one step on the landing, but a pretty good exercise. That'll keep him in the running. Well, he was fifth coming into this rotation, so he'll have to move up. If he's going to get close to first place. Again, Brian Ginsberg, who you'll see later on on this same apparatus, is our leader going into this rotation. We're waiting for the score. Let's look at the replay. There's the stutz before the end of the exercise. You can't wobble too much up there. A nice double back. A little bit low, but not bad. Again, it gives you a chance to show Wolf your Hoffman, these born in Neustrelitz, halfway between Berlin and the Baltic Sea. On the other side of the floor is Christy Phillips, the youngest American ever to compete in this championship. She'll be up on the beam, the apparatus we just saw, Brock Sanova, compete on. She is excellent on this piece of apparatus, and she has a chance to take the lead. 
But she'll wait as Hoffman will wait for his score, a 9.70. So he'll be our men's leader at this point since he, was, since he was the first to compete in the rotation. Now, Christy Phillips. Christy is great on the beam. She has a very difficult exercise. Look at this. Look at the back flexibility on that front limber going sideways on the beam. Whoops. A little bit of a bobble on a full turn there. It was a full and a quarter, but she's a good performer. She knows how to make the best of the situation. There's a roundoff layout. Okay. She has to know that a good performance here could put her into the lead because the Soviet did open the door. When we spoke with her coach, Bella Carolla, yesterday, he said that at this age, she's even better than Mary Lou was. I remember Bella has coached both Mary Lou and Nadia Komenich to Olympic golds. Christy Phillips actually moved to Houston from Baton Rouge, and she's living there with her mom while her dad lives back at home. Now watch this. Just like Barak Sanova, there's a reverse plange. Now Christy does what they call the Phillips, a straddled reverse plange. Everybody's looking for those originality points these days. She's in good shape so far. Okay. <laughs> nice side somersault. Look at her face. She knows if she can just get through this dismount, this could put her in the lead. Double twist. And she has <laughs> the landing. That could be it. All right, a little bit. A little shaky, but it's done. All right. Bella Caroli calls her his little bug. And there's her mother, Terry Phillips who has come here from Houston. I'm sure she's been adding up the scores herself. Okay. Ooh. Okay, here is the back flexibility on this reverse plange. Now, once she hits that position, she's going to straddle her legs and pike a little bit and do her own original version of that skill. <laughs> Look at that right angle bend in the back. Unbelievable flexibility. She needs a 9-6 to take the lead away from the Soviet. So now the anxious moments of waiting. Only gets home twice a year to Baton Rouge while she's training in Houston. Looking at the Soviet Braxanova during practice on Friday, she told me, gee, she looks so perfect, I don't even, I don't know how I'd ever be, ever be able to beat her. Nine, six, seven, five is the score as we have it, which now gives Christy Phillips the lead once again. <laughs> so now Christy Phillips, our leader, with that familiar hug from Bella Caroli who we've seen many times in that same position with Mary Lou Redden. Here is Brian Ginsburg, our men's leader coming into this rotation. We've talked about how unfortunate it is that Tim Daggett had to drop out of the competition, but if he had to leave way for an American, this is the guy. Brian is a great exercise here. Interesting skill right at the beginning. Nice peach hand and a front giant, which you don't see very many of those. He'll get originality points for that. Ooh. Okay, a little bit over on his back giant. That'll cost him a couple of tens. Ginsburg needs a 9-2 to jump into the lead. But still to come after him will be the Soviet. There's a great strength move. Fantastic. A straddle plunge pressed to a handstand. Double back. <laughs> okay. He sure knows how to flip those double backs, and I'm sure he's glad to get through with that exercise. Tim Daggett had to withdraw from the competition because of an injury he sustained on the floor exercise, and now Brian Ginsburg has jumped right back in there into the lead ahead of some of the best in the world, including the Soviets and the Chinese. Here is the plunge. Notice the tremendous leverage strength as he presses Brian back up to the handstand. The major at UCLA. He's five feet two, only 105 and pounds, and doctors. no muscle, no body fat on this guy whatsoever, let me tell you. So he originally got into also gymnastics because he was hyper as a kid, and he told us he used to climb out of his crib and was always doing headstands in the back of the family car. 
Sounds like something you might do, Bart. Connor. I tell you, I think a lot of us got into gymnastics because our parents found that we were breaking too many pieces of furniture around the house. I did cartwheels and flips off of everything we had. I think a lot of uh, Ginsburg's excitement and maybe even ability here has come Ladies from this packed house full of Americans, 8,500 here in Fairfax, Virginia. Still waiting for the score. A 9-6-5. So he is our new leader. He retains the lead, rather, in this rotation. So both American men and women lead here at the American Cup Gymnastics. We'll be back with more gymnastics in just a moment. The American Cup Gymnastics Championships are sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Ace Hardware Corporation. U.S. Sprint, where every fiber optic pole will sound like you're right next door. And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Welcome back to the 1986 American Cup Gymnastics Championships. I'm John Tesh, along with Bart Connor. A 9.675 on the balance beam gave the youngster 13-year-old American Christy Phillips back the lead here in the competition. And here's a look now at that performance. Here's the back straddle down, right in line, as opposed to her Soviet competitor, Baraksanova, who was out of line and lost a couple of tenths of a point. Barak Sanova actually, as you recall, scored a 9-4 after she fell off the beam. Here's this tremendous flexibility again in the reverse planche and then a trick I'm sure we'll soon be calling the Phillips. A straddle reverse plunge. He presses back around. And again, it was this highly original routine that put Christie back in first place with one exercise left, the floor exercise. Good work here on the side somersault. <laughs> a little wobbly there, but that is a very difficult move. One of the toughest ones to do. Well, it gave her a good score of 9675. And right now, Christy Phillips, as we complete her dismount there, is with our Peter Corman. Peter. Christy, great job. You have amazed everybody in this auditorium. A tremendous, tremendous job on three events. What was going through your mind as you were doing that balance beam routine? I was just nervous because I knew if I didn't make it that my chances for first were gone with. And so I was just saying, you can't, just stay calm, you can do it, and just do it as good as you can so I can win first, maybe. I hope so. <laughs> and how about floor exercise to come now? you got an audience that's behind you. Everybody's enjoyed watching you. Are you going to have a good time out there? Yes, I sure am. And being that floor is one of my better events, I hope I can pull it through. Great. Well, I know you're going to please us all. Keep going. Keep up the good work and try to win another American Cup for us. Thanks a lot. Back to you, John. Thank you, Peter. We'll be back with more gymnastics after this word from your local station. Welcome back to the 1986 American Cup Gymnastics Championships, a confrontation Soviet-American developing for the women and for the men as well. After four rotations, a look at the standings here. And Brian Ginsburg from the United States, just ahead of the Soviet gymnast Alexei Tikanki. Still to come for all the gymnasts here are the parallel bars and the very dangerous high bar. And Tikanki has a very excellent parallel bar routine, so he'll be one to watch. Brian Ginsburg assuming the mantle of leader for the United States after Tim Daggett had to withdraw from the competition. And Ginsburg is now with our Peter Corman. Thank you, John. Brian Ginsburg, you have amazed everybody. We've never seen you in a competition like the American Cup, and suddenly you're in first place. How does it feel? It feels great. I've never been in this big of an international competition, and I came in here with the attitude of just hitting my sets, and whatever happens is great. And now 
I found him in first place, and this is, I mean, the best thing that's ever happened to me so far. Do you think you can keep the lead now? You have high bar to go, one more big event. What's it going to take out there? I'm just going to do what I did yesterday and try to hit my set. And, you know, whatever happens, you know, it, it'll be great. Great job. Back to you, John. Okay, Peter, thank you very much. Now, next to come will be Alexei uh, Tikonki from the Soviet Union, as I mentioned. He has his work cut out for him because he would have to have a perfect score of 10.0 to move into the lead ahead of Ginsburg. And, of course, we've talked about the new judging rules and the restrictions in the scores. It's very, very difficult, and you very rarely see a perfect 10 anymore. The judges are getting very tight with those scores, but this guy's going to push that, Mark. I'll tell you, he has a great exercise, one of the longest routines I've ever seen. I'll tell you, it's one of the most dangerous ones I've ever seen as well. Front toss out of a cast support. Notice how sharp he is. Beautiful giant swing right to the top. Fantastic. Diamidoff. Notice everything is very aggressive and very sure of himself. Back toss. Back toss. Two in a row. Here's the dismount. A pike double back. And he nailed it. That was an outrageous exercise. Well, I'm sure he knew he had to score a perfect 10. If he came up with that type of performance, they don't give many of them these days. And there hasn't been one yet. <laughs> Alexander. Born in 1961 in Leninsk, a Siberian town of a half a million people. Here's the back toss, and another one right in a row, and a pike double back. Talking about nail and a landing. That's what you have to do for the big score. So now again, four judges for the men. The high and the low will be thrown out, and that'll give us our average, which will let us know in which position Alexei Dikonki from the Soviet Union will stand. He was a very strong member of their world championship team this past November in Montreal. They won and nearly killed all the other teams, as a matter of fact. The Soviets are so strong. Dikonki's name in uh, Russian actually means the quiet one, which we found out uh, after we interviewed the Soviet girl, Baraksanova and uh, uh, Alexei, because we got about three or four words out of him. The mark that we have right now is a 9.9 .9 for Tikanki. 9.9, .9, one tenth away from perfection. So he does not pass Ginsburg, but that's the highest score we've seen today here. And, he, and the, the crowd loves it. They're really supporting him because he is a great performer. But still, Brian Ginsburg leads here at the American Cup gymnastics competition. It is a real dogfight. We'll be back. Welcome back. Halfway through the fifth rotation. Uh, here's a look at the standings. Brian Ginsburg, Alexei Tikonki, Ulf Hoffman. And Ginsburg was not the favorite coming into this meet, Mark Connor. It was Tim Daggett. There he is, Brian Ginsburg, 19 years old, in his first international competition. Isn't that incredible? But I tell you, that has happened so many times at this American Cup, is that young, hungry competitor gets a big chance at a meet like this, and they go for it. Here's Sabrina Marr, our other American, 15 years old, a ninth grader from Los Angeles. She was eighth entering this rotation. She's had a tough day. Well, she did very well on vaulting, and then she completely fell off the bars, which dropped her right down in this tough field. She had a great mount, though. Back handspring on. Oh! oh. Now, she's allowed to get back on the beam. Right, now that's going to cost her five-tenths of a point and she's allowed to go back up onto the beam and continue her exercise. That was disappointing because that's not that tough of a skill to stick. The tougher one's coming up now. Right here should be a back handspring to a layout. If she did like she performed in the warm-up, she'll be okay. Okay, she nailed that. Now that was the tougher skill. I think she let up a little bit on the easier one, the tuck backflip. Sabrina hurt her back after the 1985 World Championships and Incidentally, she was treated by the same Chinese doctor as Tiffany Chin, American figure skater who you'll see skating in the World Championships here on CBS. Very nice. Swing through layout. Okay, she's going to prepare for the dismount. Taking her time because it's a big dismount. Double back. Okay, and a couple of steps on the landing, but it's a good dismount. The way the score is run at this moment, um, even if she gets a perfect 10, she cannot take the lead. But she needs a good, a good score to jump back into it. 
Here's a replay now of that problem she had. Okay, it's just a tuck back. And it looks like she's just a little bit off and can't seem to control it. Now, Sabrina's a great gymnast. She's our national champion. I'm sorry she let down there a little bit because she got through the tough skills in the exercise and lost it on one of the easier ones. So Sabrina Marr waiting for her score. A reminder, Christy Phillips, the other American, is still in first place just ahead uh, of the Soviet and the rest of the Eastern Europeans. Actually, Sabrina's parents are both from Canton in the south of China. They both emigrated to the United States during the communist takeover, which was in 1949. Her dad runs a wholesale grocery business in Monterey Park, California. And she is an honor student. Her score coming up now, 8.925. So another disappointment. But in the women's standings, it's still Christy Phillips in the lead. It's Phillips, Stoyanova, Boraksanova, and Ladanyi. Back here at the George Mason University Patriot Center in Fairfax, Virginia, it's time for the Romanian Mariana Tudor for her balance beam routine. Five years ago, at the age of 11, she began her young career. Look at the beautiful extension on the straddle L press. Very nice mount, very clean, very pretty. Nice high tuck back lift. She comes, of course, from a long line of outstanding Romanian beam workers. Nadia Comaneci and Ekaterina Sabo being two of the best, of course. They work the beam as if they're tumbling on a plank of wood or a piece of concrete as wide as a sidewalk. They don't seem to be intimidated by the narrowness of the beam whatsoever. This again is the second to last rotation for both the men and the women. The women are on the beam now. Later they'll be on the floor exercise. Look the at that. <laughs> the men are on the parallel bars and later will be on the high bar, which of course is the most exciting and dangerous apparatus in gymnastics. Look at the beautiful line of extension. She, of course, just completed a beautiful layout. She's taking a little bit of a pause here. She gets ready for the dismount. Back handspring, back handspring, tucked a little back. A little over rotation, but that is a tough dismount to do. Two back handsprings into a double back. The 16-year-old born in Bucharest, who uh, yesterday just had an awful vault. She almost really hurt herself very seriously. She landed almost right on her face. Now she's performing those new vaults that the gymnasts are doing, the back handspring onto the horse, and they're getting pretty dangerous. A lot like this dismount here. Back handspring, two foot takeoff to a tuck double back. She is up in the air on that dismount, let me tell you. 1984 junior Romanian champion even a score of 10 would not give her the lead. Our leader again is Christy Phillips. And uh, Bella Caroli, who uh, defected here in the United States, who had uh, earlier coached Nadia Komenich, and then, of course, Mary Lou Retton. Uh, we asked one of the coaches, there's Bella there, we asked one of the Romanian coaches about Bella, and she, sta she said only that they have not suffered since the defection of Bella Caroli. What do you expect them to say? Caroli has actually been offered uh, jobs with the Korean and the Australian gymnastics teams. He did a great job with the Romanians and is now doing a fine job with the Americans as well. Again, Mariana Tudor from Romania waiting for the score. One wonderful thing about Bella and his tradition in coaching the Romanians, of course, and now the Americans, is that everyone thought, let's listen to Bella. Let's find out if he has any magical secrets. He doesn't have any magical secrets. He says, hey, we just work harder than anybody else. There she is, Christy Phillips, our women's leader. Again, the heir apparent to Mary Lou Retton's crown. Mary Lou would have been the defending champion if she had been here today. She is not here today. We'll tell you more about that a little later on. We have an interview with her and uh, more information. Look at that. Mariana Tudor, 9.625. With congratulations from Christy Phillips. Up now on the parallel bars, this is Laurent Barbieri, 25 years old, from France. There's a nice Healy twirl 
into a straddle cut. A look at the strength here in a straight arm, straight body press to handstand. He's had a great day so far. A little sloppy there on the stutz and the peach. This is not his best exercise, but the four apparatus that he competed on before this, look at the plange press. It's He's amazing. Very well. It's amazing to see how this event has evolved, uh, even with uh, a routine called the Connor that we've seen in the past. That's right. Nice double back for a dismount. That wasn't the most difficult exercise, and it didn't have any originality in it. And we've talked a lot about the importance of originality in a parallel bar exercise. Not in a position to lead at this point. Laurent Barbieri, 25 years old, lives at the French Olympic Gymnastic Center near Toulouse in southwest France. Here he straddles back to a plange. This is and then closes Graviano. his legs as he presses to a handstand. Swings down for the tuck double back. A little hop on the landing, but good job. Actually, his strongest events are the vault and the floor exercise. And uh, he's not a great all-around gymnast. Or the French really haven't been great all-around gymnasts in the past, but in the individual, individual events, they've been quite strong, winning seven medals in European World Olympic Championships since 1983. A 9-6 now for Barbieri. So with that performance, Barbieri has moved into a tie, actually, for third place as we take a look now at the current men's standings. Ginsburg still ahead of Takaki, but by only one-tenth of a point. Continues to be a great battle there. The women's standings, Phillips in first place, out of Stoyanova, and Baraksanova has moved into third place. The question, where is defending champion Mary Lou Retton? We'll be back to tell you more about that after this message and a word from your local stations. Thirteen-year-old Christy Phillips, our leader here at the American Cup Gymnastics Championships, continuing the history of strong American presence at the competition. Last year, it was Mary Lou Retton, of course, who dominated the ladies' field. This year, this day, actually, Mary Lou was across town at the Washington Convention Center signing autographs. This was going on while this competition was getting underway at the Patriot Center. A lot of questions about all of this. Why is Mary Lou, the defending champion, not here competing? Well, it bears some examination. Let's take you back to the American Cup one year ago. Okay, here should be the dismount. Round up, double back. <laughs> nice job! Mary Lou Retton, I'd say, is just about back to Olympic form if she was ever away. And so a year ago, she claimed her third straight American Cup title. Yet this year, the United States Gymnastics Federation declined to invite her to the event she has all but owned. Mary Lou would not compete at the American Cup. The reason Mary Lou is not competing in the American Cup is uh, basically her decision. She has opted not to uh, participate on our national team this past year. Spots on our national team were determined last June, a time when Mary Lou was all but burned out from the grueling pressures of gymnastics competition. I had to take a break. I'm only human. I'm not a machine. I mean, a body can only take that much of intense training like that, physically and mentally. So I quit, you know, quit training, or slacked off, as they would say, and I had other, co other commitments. And I missed national championships, yes I did. But I mean, I was physically tired, I had to. And apparently that's the reason that they say I didn't get invited. I think they're pretty insensitive to me. But the USGF says the reason is that Mary Lou did not show a commitment to the gymnastics program itself. If Mary Lou had been part of the program and had been competing and had shown us that she was interested in following the international program, she would have been in this meet. But we have an obligation and responsibility to every kid that's out there that's participating in our program. The fact is, Mary Lou gymnast has become Mary Lou celebrity. Her time of late has not been spent in the gym her commitments have involved appearances far from the vault and balance beam. Are you all right? I'm fine. This past year, I've been invited to several big occasions. I had dinner with the president. I also had dinner with Princess Diana and Prince Charles. Um, just, you know, all this royal stuff I'm getting invited to. And, you know, it hits me. The new enemy.
Energizer AA battery. It's supercharged. Mary Lou continues to reap the benefits of her stunning Olympic performance. But it now appears it's time to make a decision. Will it be Mary Lou Celebrity or Mary Lou Gymnast? After all of this incident, um, I am reconsidering what my future is going to be now. Um, I have stopped training. If she wants to compete, the door is open. If she wants to go on the other side of the door and do the endorse endorsements and commercial opportunities, those things are available to her too through our USGF Trust Program. She can still retain her eligibility. She still has that opportunity to compete if she wants to. There you have it, both sides of the story. The bottom line is that the defending champion, Mary Lou Retton, is not here. But Christy Phillips is, and after five rotations, Phillips leads the rest of the women's field with still the floor exercise remaining. One more rotation for the men. The high bar awaits Ginsburg to Conkey and the rest. And Brian Ginsburg, one exercise away from becoming the men's champion. We'll be back with more gymnastics in a moment. Welcome back, John Tesh with Bart Connor at the 1986 American Cup Gymnastics Championships. When the day began, all the talk was about Tim Daggett, the Olympic gold medalist. But he had to pull out with an ankle injury, and now all the pressure is on this 19-year-old sophomore from UCLA. Not even expected, really, to make it to the final, but now Brian Ginsburg is in first place with one last piece of apparatus remaining, the very dangerous and challenging high bar. You know, Brian has a lead by about one-tenth of a point. It's interesting to see that he's got to hang on to it right here. Brian Ginsburg, perhaps the least known of our American team, competing today for the American Cup title, of course. We asked him earlier what this opportunity meant to him. This is one of the biggest competitions in the United States this year. And it, it really feels good to compete. Because World Championships, I didn't get to compete. I was alternate. And it was hard to sit back and watch the United States compete and knowing I couldn't do anything. So this feels really good competing. And here he is. He said when he first showed up, he was dazzled by the Soviet and Chinese. That's, why he, that's what he told us. He needs a 995 to clinch the title. There's an interesting graphic. And he's also in an interesting situation. And he's the first guy out. If he can do a great exercise here, he knows he has a lead by a tenth of a point. He can sit back and watch everybody else try and catch him. Ginsburg, one last routine that could give him the championship. It's a nice stem pirouette. There he goes into the one arm with a full twist and he pirouettes back over the top. Here's a one arm to a ginger. Okay, he's a little bit close on that, but he kept the exercise moving. Good speed on the front giants. There's a front with a four. Nice release move. Go, go. He has to keep the exercise moving. Okay, a little stall on that cast, but good stallers. Now watch this dismount. Oh. Whoa. Now that was a full twisting double back in a straddle position. And he looked like he just didn't have enough rotation on that. I gotta say, there goes the 995. Boy, this is going to be close because he has opened the door for some of the other greats to come up and try and catch him. Ginsburg with his coach, Yefim Furman, who defected. He's from the Soviet Union. He defected six years ago after the 1980 games. He's the assistant coach at UCLA. We're holding for the score. For okay, here's the replay of that front with a full. Lucy lets go, does a front flip with a full twist. And catches it. There was a little bit of a form break, but that's a very unusual trick. Now let's see what happens on the dismount here. It's a full twisting double in a straddle position. I say it looks like a flying Thomas Flair. He just ran out of rotation there, could not get his feet underneath him. That's got to cost him right there. Again, he's the first in this rotation. The score he gets will make him the score leader since Ryan he is Ginsburg. the first. The score is 955. Nine <laughs> so. Still a nail biter for Brian Ginsburg. If he had scored a 995, as you recall, he could have clinched the title, but now it's going to be extremely close between himself and Wong, the Chinese, and the Soviet. And so now Ginsburg and the rest of us will wait to see who will win the championship here. Dekonki still to come. 
Back here at the 1986 American Cup Gymnastics Competition, I'm John Tesh along with Bart Connor and Peter Corman, and it could not get any closer in the men's and the women's competition. Now, for the men, they have one last apparatus on which to compete. This is Alexei Tikanki from the Soviet Union. He has stood in second place until this point. Brian Ginsburg, the American, just competed. His score was a 9.55, and you see that graphic there. Tikanki, if he scores a 9.70, he will win the competition. Right now, let's go down to Peter Corman, who's with our American, Brian Ginsburg. Thank you, John. Brian, absolutely outstanding. It looked a little wild up there on the high bar. Oh, thanks. I was a little nervous going into the last event, so I'm a little tired at the end. But you know, the releases I went all out for, and just when I fell a little bit short. When you came to this competition two days ago, had you any dream in your wildest imagination that you, at the end of everything but one exercise, would be in first place? I didn't. I couldn't even conceive that when I came here. I just thought if I went in and hit my sets, I'd end up, you know around the middle, maybe the lower half. But I, I never thought I'd make it into finals even. Are you gonna be the next American gymnastics star, Brian? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just gonna keep you know, working harder and harder and whatever happens, you know. I'm just pleased with it. Thank you very much, back to you, John. So now, Peter Corman, you and Brian Ginsburg and all of us here will wait for Alexei Tikanki's routine. And the high bar we've seen Bart Connor has precipitated some of the most dangerous routines in the past year or so. Oh, and Alexei is unbelievable on this event. Yesterday in the preliminary round, he was hot and he just blasted through his routine with no problem. He's the kind of guy who could score the, a 9.85, the 9.9, or the 10 because he has that level of exercise. But let's face it, this is the finals and he's got to do it right now if he's going to do it. Lives in a Siberian town of half a million people in the area of Lake Baikal, the deepest lake in the world. His name means the silent one. Back up rise, free hip hop change. Now look at that, a full pirouette into eagle giant swings. Okay, now here comes the releases. Okay, there's a reverse hect, perfect. Okay, he does another one, right to a kinger. He is right on. Those are the toughest release moves. And he did them all in a row. There it is, one, two, three, triple back, and he nails it. Whoa. That was unbelievable. What a great finish to a very tough exercise. I'm talking about nailing a landing, that's how you do it. Alexei Tikonki. He broke his foot in 1983 on the floor exercise. Has come back strong since then, been a member of the Soviet national gymnastics team since 1981. Notice the beautiful position here as he leaves the bar. One, two, three, pulls that around, spots the landing, and he's still way up there. Enough perfect time to plant his feet and stick that landing. Here's a replay of the reaction of Brian Ginsburg. And a little applause Score there, but I afraid to show any emotion. There it is. 9.90. And the Soviet has taken the American Cup. Brian Ginsburg, he led throughout this competition. But the women's title is still all up in the air. Christy Phillips still stands in first place. Brian Ginsburg in second at this moment. And here now on the floor exercise, Mariana Tudor. Here's her opening run. Full twisting double back. She nailed it. This type of exercise is traditional for the Romanians, a kind of cutesy routine that Nadia Comaneci made famous. We're back through the double back and a short on the landing. That's gonna be five tenths of a point, but that was a tough run to attempt. A 
Mariana Tudor, fourth, entering this, her final performance here on the floor exercise. Still to come, of course, the American, Christy Phillips. Okay, she's catching her breath for her last tumbling run. And a backhand spring double back. Okay, a little bit short, but she didn't touch out. She's all of 16 years old. Been competing in gymnastics, as I mentioned earlier, for five years and four months. And her coach, Tatiana Popa, said it's too late to begin for a gymnast. It certainly doesn't look that way, though, with her. One thing great about the Romanian gymnasts is the coaches always insist that they push the most level of difficulty they can possibly do. This is a very tough second tumbling run here. Look at, she's pulling like crazy, trying to get the rotation, and she still is just a little bit short. That's traditional in Romanian gymnastics. Make them do the hardest tricks and hope they can get away with them in the meets. All right, so she'll wait for her score. Again, she was fourth entering her final performance. She doesn't have a chance to win the competition. She does have a chance, however, to move up. But I'm not sure after that dismount. In the men's field, Brian Ginsburg is, we've been told, virtually assured of a second place. Only Wong, the Chinese, can tie Ginsburg for a second. Here's Christy Phillips getting instructions from Bella Caroli. We have a wireless microphone on him. Let's listen. Pressing down and away, no way to step backward. Okay, pressing, pressing that was down. Okay, hit it hard on the one and a half. And nice the score and is up for Mariana Tudor up. as we move back to Christy the Phillips okay. will be the last to compete in the floor exercise. And it's still Cole very close in the women's competition. <laughs> Mariana Tudor with a 9.65. I'm sorry, 9.825 for Tudor. So now we wait for Christy Phillips, and we'll be back with more gymnastics in a moment. Welcome back to Fairfax, Virginia. We're getting set now for the floor exercise, which will feature last Christy Phillips, who has stood in first place since nearly the beginning of this competition. We just saw Brian Ginsburg on his high bar routine. She's warming up here. This is not her performance. We saw Brian Ginsburg, who finished in second place. He can only be tied for second place as the rest of the gentlemen are warming up for their high bars. Now, let's take a look at Christy Phillips here and Bella Caroli. Bella Caroli coached, of course, Nadia Comaneci and Mary Lou Retton. Bella Caroli's newest star pupil is Christy. We asked the 13-year-old what it meant to her to have the master as her coach. Well, he helps get you motivated and you know he's the best coach because he's coached two Olympic champions, Nadia Comaneci and Mary the Red, and hope he can coach another one. <laughs> me. Hope he can coach another one, me. Well, it could well be. She is right on target. She was not old enough, of course, to compete in last uh, 84's Olympic Games. You have to be 15 in the calendar year. In fact, Christy is an interesting position because gymnastics is in its greatest day now. She'll show up at these exhibitions with the Olympic team and many times there'll be 15, 16,000 people in the stands. So she has learned to really play to the crowd and I think that's a real advantage for her today here. All right, so again, we're going to see Christy Phillips coming up. She'll be performing last in the floor exercise. I think Peter Corman now has the legendary Bella Caroli. Yeah, I see him. Go ahead, Peter. Thank you, John. Bella, amazing. You've been in this position before. Now one more time. Is she going to be able to do it? Oh, I hope. I hope. You know, that would be a, a great moment of my life. She's just 13. She's a little girl. And she's jumping into the competition, an unknown, like an unknown junior, junior. And now she's leading this competition, this prestigious competition. Oh, before the Russians, Bulgarians, all world champions. And I think it's great. One more event we have to go. One more hot start. One more great event and that's gotta gotta she gotta make it when are you going to be able to relax in the middle of that floor routine is there any one tumbling skill that bothers you a little bit yeah first tumbling pass is the most important to make it that's the hardest is a combination tumbling very very tough tumbling a whip back a somersault with other double somersault after that immediately so that's gonna gonna risky and uh, gonna that's the, the highest difficulty on her routine and after that everything she's handling well so that's gonna be the first moment. After the first 12 seconds, we're gonna know. 
Well, you know what, Bella? I have a feeling. I have a feeling she's going to do it, just <laughs> like all your others. Oh, she got to do it. Back to you, John Tesh. How's that for a prediction? Thank you very much, Peter Corman. And now Christy Phillips has to wait for the remaining athletes here to compete on the floor exercise. Just before her will be the Soviet, Barak Sanova, who has been just near perfection. A girl that she didn't think early in the week she had any chance of beating. And now it's all on Christy Phillips' shoulders. A look now at the standings in the women's competition. This is after five rotations. Phillips Stoyanova from Nova Bulgaria. From Bulgaria. Barak Sanova is in third place. Now, either one of these two ladies has a chance to catch Phillips. Next up now on the men's high bar is Laurent Barbieri, 25 years old. He is third entering this, his last performance. No one can catch Tikonki, Alexei Tikonki, the Soviet. He has already won the competition. Brian Ginsburg is assured of a second, but he can be tied. Tim Daggett, of course, out of the competition with an injury. He just joined us on the floor exercise. And there's another one of those release moves. Beautiful, from range. a one arm, he does it to Kachev over the bar. A blind release move. Very nice inverted giant swings and a hop pirouette to a one arm, right to a ginger. Nice combination of one arm skills, very risky. So far, this is a really hot exercise. Picking up speed here for the dismount. A layout full out, and he nails it. What a great exercise. He had a great day. First of all, tremendous performance on the floor exercise and vaulting, and I think that's held him up in this very strong international field. 19 countries represented here. We started yesterday with 19 athletes, or better than 19 athletes. It's been pared down to eight men and eight women here today. And after six rotations, actually the middle of six rotations, Tikonki and Ginsburg in second place. We're still waiting for Barbieri's score. The format of this gymnastics meet is unlike any other. There are no, com no compulsory exercises. So what happens is they use yesterday's competition to qualify the top eight and top You're women to get in here. And then it's just all out war. The scores from yesterday did not count. So six pieces of apparatus for the men, four for the women. And Laurent Barbieri's score is an excellent 9.8. 9.80. He has to be very pleased with that performance. One of his strongest all-around performances I've seen in an international event for Mr. Barbieri. All right, now on the floor exercise, this is Zhong Yong Su from the People's Republic of China. She's 16 years old, four foot nine, 84 pounds. She was sixth entering the floor exercise. Okay, here's the first big tumbling run. Full in, okay. A little bit low on the landing, but no steps. She handled it. The second run, front step out, through to a double twist, very clean. Chung is just one of many in a long line of great Chinese gymnasts. They have such a tremendous developmental and feeder program. They have a very deep national program. The People's Republic of China was only admitted to the IOC in 1979. But gymnastics has been a popular sport in China for at least four decades. Great exercise. Zhong Yong Su. Her coach tells us she has unusual leg force, which allows her to be a specialist in the vault on the floor. Up, the bar, up next on the horizontal Chen. bar will be her compatriot, who is trying to take over second place. And here's a very strong finish to the exercise. Round off back handspring, nice high double twist. Perfect job on the landing. Not the most difficult exercise, but very well done. All right, now on the high bar, 
This is Wong Chong Shang, 19 years old. Now watch this exercise. Look at that. A one arm to a reverse act. Look at the extension. One arm over the top again to a one arm ginger. Perfect execution. This is a great exercise. Not only is he doing the most difficult elements, but look at the line and the extension and the beautiful form. Here we go for the dismount. Triple back, one, two, three. <laughs> oh, a little bit of a hop on the landing. It was a great exercise, but he did not stick the landing as the Soviet gymnast Tikonkik did. I like that, he does a triple flip and you say a little bit of a hop on the landing. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wong Chong Sang, he's a student at the Guadong Institute for Physical Education. Here's a replay. Look at the position here. One, two, three, he's pulling hard. Looks for the mat. And just a little out early because he had to take a hop. It can't be a perfect 10, but it's going to be very close. Notice the one arm position here as he does a ginger salto way up over the bar and catches in perfect form, perfect rhythm as he swings back into the exercise. The last competitor in the high bar. He needed a 9.75 to beat Barbieri for third place. A 9.9. So Wang Shongsheng with a near perfect now performance. And I believe that puts Soviet him Union, in Irina third Barak place. Sanova. Yes, he's in third place. So now, in the women's floor exercise just across the way, this is Irina Baraksanova challenging Christy Phillips, who's first entering this rotation. Christy yet to come. Let's just let this play. She is great. Beautiful fully. She needs a 975 to lead at this point. Here's the second run. One and a half twist through. Do a double twist. Okay, she stepped out of bounds, I think. If she didn't, it was very close to the line. Look at the elegant dance work. Look at that flexibility and extension. One quick deep breath for the last tumbling run. On a back handspring. Tuck double back. One step, but she handled it. Irina Barakhsanova from the Soviet Union. A member of the Red Army Sports Club in Tashkent, never been to the United States before. So she has a passion for ice cream. Doesn't look like she eats much of it though. Moroshnoya, I think is how they say it in Russian. It's the only word I know in Russian. Okay, here is the second tumbling run. There's a one and a half twist. She's really moving, good speed. Through to the double twist and just a little over rotated. And you can see her footsteps out of bounds. That's gonna cost her a 10th of a point. All right, let's listen now to a replay of what Bella Caroli was telling Christy Phillips during this routine. Second pass, running over, bam, brr, over again. Jump it up immediately, okay? Dance it to the end, okay? No, gonna be all right, all right. Are you ready? Again, that was while this young lady, Barak Sanova, was performing. And he's always there, isn't he, Bella? He's the, the ultimate cheerleader, he pacing the sidelines. One great thing about Bella is he's always managed to recruit some of the finest talent in the world. But better than that, I think he knows the best of how to get the most out of each of his performers. And that means really psyching him up. He has her really jazzed. She needed, we're still waiting for the score. She needed a 9.75 to lead. And the score, 9.625. So Barak Sanova, will not be a factor at this point. Bar from the German Democratic Republic, Ulf Hoffmann. Back over on high bar. 
Ulf Hoffman does a great exercise. He nailed it yesterday. Let's see if he can do it again today. Look at this. Okay. That's called a Delchev release move. He was a little close on the bar. Good one arm giant swings. Nice. Piked front somersault. He was in a little close, but no form break on that one. Look at the great work here on the inverted giant swings. Here's the speed. Now watch this crazy dismount. One, two, three, over the top. Oh, I don't know how his knees take that landing. The excitement on the high bar. Olaf Hoffman will lead a perfect 10 to tie for third. And that will be unlikely. But here is Christy Phillips, the last comp competitor in the floor exercise. You can hear the crowd, the excitement. Last competitor of the day. She needs a 9.625 to win. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we have one more performer. And then the moment of recognition of all of our performers occurs. We hope you will stay with she's us. She's a little nervous. I'd imagine she's a little bit nervous, but I'll bet she's mostly psyched. How can you not be when you're around a guy like Bella Caroli? He's the kind of person that really instills a tremendous amount of confidence in these young kids, even though they're in high-pressure international competitions. He seems to help them realize how they can handle it. The youngest American ever to compete in the American Cup. Coached again by Bella Caroli. We've talked before about the style of gymnastics. She is a showman. She doesn't have the big twisting double flip like the Soviet gymnast, the but she knows States how to ham it up. America. If she can put this exercise Christy together, Phillips. she'll be tough to beat. So here she is, Christy Phillips, by way of Baton Rouge training in Houston with Caroli and his wife. As Bella said, we're gonna know right at the beginning of the exercise whether she can pull this off. The first tumbling run, here it comes. Whip back. Pike double. Okay, she made it. And look at her go. Pretty sassy for 13 years old. <laughs> this is the young lady who. Now here's the same passed. pass that barks out of a mist. She made it. Exactly Almost. the same tumbling run, and she stayed inbounds. Almost stepped out. This is the young lady, as I was mentioning, that Bella told us is even better at this age than Mary Lou was. I think she's home free. Look at that in her face. She's got only a double full to finish this exercise. Not the most difficult dismount, but she can make it. Okay. You gotta love her. That's not us. That's the voice of Bella Caroli you hear, who is just as relieved, I think, as Christy Phillips. Now that's his phone here now. I want to listen while they wait. Now that's his phone here. This score, we will be beginning our Ooh. preparation for our special entertainment while our computer people tap Again, the needs a 9.625 to win. Out now. No four yet. <laughs> Candy. Thank, you. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Uh, this could be a very smoke. big moment Nine, for her. Seven. The score for Christy Phillips Nine. is being posted. Nine. <laughs> what is that? He's seeing the individual judge scores. There's six of them. They have to be averaged together after two or three. <laughs> There it is. This. 
you won it. Is the American you Cup champion. No, you can't be. Get up, Pablo. Get up, Pablo. Here's Look at a this tumbling run. Here's where it all happened, right here. The whip back, through to the pike double back. And when she made that, she was home free. You can see it in her face. Now here's a replay of Bella's reaction to that one pass. <laughs> You don't even have to open the wireless microphone to hear what he said there. <laughs> Bella Caroli has now coached three champions of the American Cup of Gymnastics Championship. We'll be back with an interview with our new champion after this word. Stay with us. This CBS Sports Sunday News Update is sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. A look at the final standings here at the American Cup Gymnastics Competition. Alexei Tikonki from the Soviet Union, Brian Ginsberg, and Wang Shangsheng, and Barbieri in fourth. The women's standings now. These are also finals. Christy Phillips, of course, the champion. Right now, let's go down to Peter Corman. Thank you, John. We have seen a lot of amazing things in gymnastics, but I don't recall ever seeing anything as exciting as that. Christy, you were absolutely unbelievable. That was the best and most exciting thing we've seen in a long time, and you looked like you enjoyed it. I did. <laughs> Your coach was awful worried when you went into floor exercise that you might not be able to make that first pass. Was that on your mind as well? That was on my mind the whole time. When I, after, as soon as I finished my beam routine, it was on my mind. And I did it, so I'm excited now. <laughs> what did you say to yourself when you were running down there knowing that you might miss that pass and that would cost a championship? I just told myself to go normal like I do in practice and that I could do it. Well, you sure did, and you made everybody up here gleam. And Bella, congratulations Thank to you again, another champion. How is this one compared to Nadia in the famous Mary Lou? Well, you know, I was just told she's in good shape and she's just in the shape like Nadia been in 83 when she started the great series of victories ending with the 84 Olympic Games. Who knows? In 88, we're going to have another Olympic champion. Who knows what you can do? Congratulations to you all. Thanks a lot. Back to you, John. Thank you, Peter Corman. I'll look again now at her reaction when she saw the score on the floor exercise. Christy Phillips, we'll be back in a moment. It's time for a 13-year-old to be properly introduced as the new young star in the world of gymnastics. Christy Phillips. And she, today, uh, is where Mary Lou Retton was one year ago, the 1986 American Cup Gymnastics Champion. For the men, for Alexei Tikanki from the Soviet the Union. 38.775 for the United States. And you are sure to see this young lady representing the United States in 1988. Our congratulations to Christy and all the fine gymnasts here today. For now, I'm John Tesh for Peter Corman and Bart Connor. So long from Fairfax, Virginia. Coming up next on CBS Sports, the Western Open from Oak Brook, Illinois. The American Cup Gymnastics Championships have been sponsored by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. The over 1,400 Midas muffler and brake shops in America. Maxwell House, when coffee's good to the last drop, it couldn't be anything but Maxwell House. And by McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's.